Hello and welcome back to Scale Down Customs. On the chopping block today is going to be the Ravel Muscle, the 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. Um, I am going to build this as a factory stock car because I just like having one, at least one of the original factory stock showroom cars in my collection before I start customizing stuff. So we're going to build this up as a as a box stock car. Maybe I'll change the wheels. Uh, I don't really like the look of those, but we'll see what happens when we get there. All right, so all the plastics are molded in white. Body looks to be in good shape. Got some pretty good mold lines we'll have to address. And these panel lines are not very deep, so I'll be scribing those down. But overall, that's looking pretty good. Nice 400 engine block. With the transmission attached. Interior bucket. The doors are molded on on this one. Makes it a little bit harder to detail paint, but, uh, but we can work with that. Nice clean interior though. Dashboard's got some texture on it. Oh, nice mold line across the top. We'll be, have to work on that. Looks like we've got a couple different hood options. So, but like I said, I'll be doing the factory stock. So it'll be a nice addition to the parts bucket and the chassis. All right, this appears to be an older kit. I got this at an auction um, a while back and just the basic black and white instruction sheet but these decals are looking a little crispy so i'm going to spray some decal solution on there to hopefully keep those from breaking up too much when we start putting them on some interesting side pipes uh, for the uh, custom build if you wanted to do that again those will be going in the parts bucket the kit chrome always looks a little bit too shiny for me so i'll be stripping that down and repainting that back up so we'll go through how to do that. And then the tires, these tires look really, really skinny. I'll probably replace these with some other tires if I can find something I like or stick with these, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, so I'm gonna go get these parts cleaned off on the sink and then we're gonna start by uh, sanding the body down, getting the mold lines taken care of and uh, scribing out the panel lines. All right, so I got all the plastics cleaned up just to get any uh, mold release agent washed off. And as you can see, I've got my glove on my left hand to just minimize getting oils from my hands onto the plastics as much as possible. Um, I usually only use on one hand because I'm right-handed, so I'm holding everything with my left hand anyway. So we're ready for a body prep. And to do that, I'm gonna be using some Tamiya sponge, the 600 grit, um, just an emery board, a couple of different sanding grits on those. And then my trusty X-Acto knife, sanding sticks, and for the scribing, I'm gonna be using my Tamiya panel line scribing tool. And this is the 0.2 head on there, I think. And a permanent marker to mark my mold lines so that once I start sanding them, I'll know how far I need to go. So we're gonna start working on the body. All right, so I got her all scribed out and sanded down. And of course, every time I do any sort of panel line scribing, I always skip off and get little scratches in my body. I don't know if you can see those, but. Anyway, so we're gonna fill those in, uh, let them dry, sand them down, and then, uh, then we'll be ready for some primer. So to do that, I'm just gonna be using some Mr. Surface 500 from Mr. Hobby. And I'm just going to dab it in and just kind of fill up those scratches. All 
All right, I think that's all of them. If you end up getting some primer or filler into the grooves, you can just rescribe it with your panel line scriber and uh, take it out of there. And depending on how deep your scratch is, sometimes it might take a couple of coats, which is fine. Um, as it kind of soaks in, just add another coat and let it dry and uh, do it again. All right, we're gonna let those dry up and maybe add another coat if we need to, sand them down, then we'll be ready for some primer. All right, so we let our filler spots dry and to sand them down, um, you don't wanna use a sponge because it will always conform to the curve and you will be left with a little bit of a bump that will show up when you prime or paint over it and it reactivates the solvents again. So same thing with sand. sandpaper is a little bit better because it's a little more rigid than the sponge, but the best thing to use is like a flat sanding device, either sanding stick, emery board like this. That way you get a nice flat sand on your filler spots. And then once I've used my sanding sticks or whatever I'm gonna use, I will finish it up with the sanding sponge just to kind of blend in that sand a little bit better. left with just a little bit of a line and there's no more filler around and you know you're good to go so we're ready for some primer so I'm gonna get this body washed off just to remove any dust and any other surface contaminants all right before I get the primer I like to be able to attach uh, anything plastic to plastic that's gonna be the same color so like body and then bumpers because you always get a better bond when it's plastic to plastic rather than having primer and paint in the way then the glue will usually bond to the paint rather than the plastic itself so you can either scrape the glue points to remove that paint and primer or with some of the smaller pieces it's not that big of a deal i'll just glue it right to the paint and usually that works fine so i'm going to get this uh, front bumper cleaned off and glued on As you'll notice, I didn't flush cut it right up to the edge um, because sometimes if I do that, I'll sometimes the pliers will push into and cut into the piece a little bit more than I want. So I want to give myself a little bit of working room. So that's what I've done on both of these pieces. That way I can just sand it down to the smoothness that I need. Just another tip. Uh, so because I have a flat edge here, I wanna use a flat sanding device. Um, that'll give me a nice, smooth, flat surface when I'm done. And then once I'm satisfied with how flat that is, then I can use the sanding sponge, which again, conforms to the curves and edges, and that'll just soften up that uh, edge a little bit more for me. All right, so the glue I'm gonna be using is the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Um, and this actually isn't the glue, it's more of a, a plastic welder, if you will. It chemically melts the plastic together, so it gives you a really, really good bond. Uh, but this will not work if the surfaces have any kind of primer or paint. This will only work plastic to plastic. And because it's an extra thin, it actually works by capillary action, uh, which means if you can just, you just touch it into the seam and it'll, it'll pull into the contact points. And this is really, really hot stuff. And like I said, it does melt the plastic. So if you touch your finger to anywhere where that glue or that cement is, it will imprint a fingerprint into the plastic. So just be really careful when you're working with this stuff. All right, I think we're ready for some primer. So for my primer, I'm gonna be using uh, just my rattle can, my Mr. Surface, uh, Mr. Primer 1000, and we'll just rattle can this on. All right, so I got the body into primer. There's some dust spots and stuff that I need to sand out, but what I'm gonna do with this first coat is I'm gonna use this primer coat as a guide coat. I'm gonna be looking for high-low spots. And as I start sanding it down, I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna be using some flat sanding devices. So my emery board and some sanding sticks so that I can get a nice flat sand across the body surfaces like blocking in real life. And right away, you can see what I mean with the high-low spots. So you can see um, on the underside, there was an ejection pin mark there that I sanded out. 
and it corresponded to the top of the car. And initially it looks pretty flat, but when you start wet sanding, uh, flat sanding or blocking out your car, you'll find some of these high low spots. And that's what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna do that over the whole body and then uh, wash it and then reprime it again. All right, so overall that body was actually pretty smooth. So now I'm just gonna go over the whole body once again with the sanding sponge, just to soften up any flat spots that may have been caused by the flat sanding board, and just to smooth off everything else. All right, so I had it primed up in the gray, and then because I'm gonna be doing the uh, factory orange, um, I wanted to do a white primer, so I went over it with the Mr. Base White 1000. As I normally do with a lot of rattle cans, I put it on way too thick, and it filled up some of the lines, and started pooling a little bit on some of the edges, so wasn't happy with it. I put it in the alcohol bath and stripped it down, so now I just need to go through and clean up some of the corners again, and clean up some of the edges where the primer's still there and just get it cleaned up and then reprimed again. So I'll be working on that for a little bit. All right, so I've got her primed back up again and white primer. And I'm gonna dry sand this just lightly just to smooth out any dust or any rough spots uh, in preparation for paint. And to do that, I'm gonna be using a 3000 grit sanding sponge by Tamiya. All right, got her all smoothed off and ready for some paint. And like I said, I'm just gonna do this, uh, the factory orange. But before we get to the uh, body color, I want to paint uh, the headliner and the engine bay uh, with some semi-gloss black first. Uh, that way I can mask that up and then we'll paint the body orange. We're gonna let that dry up. We'll back mask the black and then we'll be ready for body paint.
It's looking pretty good. I've got a little bit of overspray in the engine area that I'll have to clean up. Uh, that's not going to be a big deal. I'll just hit it with the airbrush just lightly. But overall, I think she's coming out pretty good. I think that'll do it for this video. So in the next video, we'll start working on some of the interior and chassis components, the engine. We'll start doing some of that assembly. And for the body, it's decals and then clear coat. So make sure you stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.